Do you want to start your own handyman business and scale it past $250,000 a year? Well, Caleb Ingram from North Seattle Handyman achieved this mark by only investing $5,000 into the business. Today we're talking to the man behind the famous North Seattle Handyman who manages to rake up to $25,000 a month with only one full-time employee. Caleb's also leveraged online marketing to serve more than 100 customers a year and is now on track to hit his mid six-figure a year mark. If you start a handyman business right now, you will immediately get phone calls, systemize, systemize, systemize. I'm a believer in spending money to make money. They're paying for themselves because if your employees aren't actually making you money, then there's no point to having them. I have all of my cordless tools throughout here. I have all my screws and all that stuff. Today, he'll share with you guys how you too can start a handyman business, how he kept his risks small in the beginning, the one thing that made his business successful, and the mistakes he made along the way. Put the word North Seattle and handyman in their review, and that helps with the Google algorithm. They told me that I had to charge more, and I listened to them. One of your first purchases should be one of these, being able to accurately quote based off of emails wow. and pictures. Let's dive deeper into the details of the insurance setup. I found that I made more money doing the small work. The only way for me to make more money at this point is to hire people. All right, you guys, let's go talk to Caleb. But before we do that, take a second, like this video, subscribe to our channel. We greatly appreciate that. And let's dive into the interview. I think he's right here, working away. Hello, Caleb. Hey. I'm Paul. Good Paul. to meet you. Nice to meet you, I'm Caleb. Awesome, let's do it. All right, Caleb, tell yeah. us when and why you started the handyman business and what were the goals for your company? Well, I started about four years ago and I originally was just trying to get into the remodel business, but once I started doing the handyman work, I realized I made more money doing handyman work than I ever would make doing a remodel. Interesting, okay. And that's what was the reason for you to just dive in completely? Uh, the reason was was because my family was growing and I was working for a corporation and mm -hmm. uh, they gave me an opportunity to jump ship, which I took and <laughs> just went running, you know. The, the, that time came. The time came and I was ready for it. You know, I was uh, about 35 years old and I was mature enough and ready to try to start my own thing. Caleb, tell us about the average monthly revenue that you are currently having and uh, Tell us about a, the best month you had and then how did you define a bad month? Sure, so when it was just me, uh, a great month would be around $25,000. That's wow. cost of goods, cost of goods uh, sold included, so there is some uh, material in that. Okay. But with two people, I would say a great month would be about $40,000. Does that fluctuate? In Absolutely. Like seasonality, cyclical? It does a little bit. Um, in the summer is definitely the hotter month. Uh, I would say that in the summer, I probably average closer to 40, and then the winter is probably closer to 30 or so. But okay. um, it all depends on, on what you can offer, and, and the, the weather does affect it to some extent, but not, not in any way that impacts my life. You know. That's good. What's your yeah. best month? that you've ever had? Uh, best month I ever had um, was 50 grand. Yeah. 50 grand, nice. Yeah. And how do you define a bad month? Like, is that break even? Do you, do you even have that? I've never broken even. I, I would say the worst month I had, I grossed $15,000, nice. yeah. Okay. Show us inside your van, kind of like your setup and, <sighs> and maybe any special unique supplies, stuff Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. So I have over here, I have all of my cordless tools throughout here. Sometimes it's more organized than this, sometimes <laughs> it's less. It just depends on the job. Okay. Um, I have paint over here, all my solvents and stuff like that, caulks and nails up here. I have all my screws and all that stuff. And then one of the nice parts about having a big ass van yeah. is you can fit a 12 foot ladder in it. <laughs> Better inside than outside? What's the, what's the pro on that? Well, uh, if I put the ladder on here, I wouldn't be able to go through a drive through coffee spot. Oh, so okay, so I, you gotta get coffee when you're going to the job <laughs> site. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Good um, for you. For me, in a, in a van like this, having small compact tools is a lot better than having something big because you're gonna be moving it in and out of your van every day. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for things that are small and compact and I'm gonna spend my money on something more expensive if it has a smaller um, compact thing. So I uh, have a couple fancy tools, my chop saw is a Festool and I have a bunch of Festool um, 
rail saws and stuff like that, which is probably the top end of the tools. Um, I typically buy expensive tools because I think that they work better. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm a believer in, in spending money to make money. What about your overhead on a monthly basis? Where are you at? What does it cost to run it? Sure. Uh, when I break it down for yeah, us. Yeah, no problem. Uh, when I first started, uh, you know, I probably had about thirty-five hundred dollars in expenses. Okay. Um, you know, and I was making when I first started between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars gross per month, so it wasn't too terribly bad. As I'm starting to grow, uh, you know, you have to take on payroll and L and I, and there's some expenses there, but ultimately they're paying for themselves because if your employees aren't actually making you money, then there's no point to having them. Right. So um, I would say, uh, you know, uh, per employee, you're gonna, you know, like in the Seattle area, you know, you're gonna probably pay around $6,000 a month oh, wow. in, okay. in wages. And then um, you also have to pay um, L&I and, I and uh, insurance for them. But like I said, if, if you're, if they're not making you money, then you're not doing it right. Besides labor, what's the next most expensive uh, monthly expense? Insurance, you know, van insurance, contractor's insurance, your bond and all that stuff. Um, I typically just try to pay it all up front the first month. Um, so it's kind of a big ticket item because I don't like paying everyday, everyday bills. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. You guys, we just launched a podcast and I just want to let you know that in the podcast, we dive into more details with people like Caleb, successful business owners. So do check it out, upflip.com forward slash podcast. I have a job I got to do tomorrow. You mind if I pack up some tools? No, yeah, let's, let's keep talking right, let's and uh, asking you questions. Let's talk yeah. about like the skills that you need to get involved in this industry, right? So for somebody who lacks the experience but wants to get involved in this industry, what can you tell us on that? Well, I think that as far as the skills of uh, skilled labor goes, if you're gonna do something like hang a TV, you don't need that much time in, to do it, but if you're gonna do you know, um, a, a ri wide variety of things, then it takes about 15 years to have that experience. So okay. it's, it's really about how you can um, market your skills. Okay. And, and so define your skills. Can you hang TVs and, and install faucets? If yes, there's people who will pay you money to do that. Or if you're a, carp a lifelong carpenter, there's people who pay you to do that too. So just what, over time, I guess. I mean, yeah. What I struggled the most with in the beginning was business systems. I didn't know how to start a business. I didn't know how to invoice. I didn't know how to do any of those things. Okay. That's so that's what I've been working mostly on is, is uh, trying to incorporate business systems. And we've made quite a bit of progress doing that so far. Okay. Guys, later in the video, Caleb will share with you exactly what systems he uses that optimizes his business for best performance. So keep watching. Wouldn't it be great if you can set up your business in less than 10 minutes? Imagine getting the ball rolling right away without long waits and complicated procedures. Well, today, Better Legal is the sponsor for this video and they are hands down the best way for you to set up your business, most affordable, quick and easy, period. Their prices are transparent, the fee is affordable, they offer you guys extra help with your business journey and they give you access to an interactive portal that'll help you manage things down the road. So take a second right now, check the link below and get the help you need right away. Is it a good time to get into this business, being a handyman? Why or why not? I would say it's probably the best time because at least in the Seattle area and in a lot of other areas, people make $200,000 a year and don't own a screwdriver. <laughs> so they'll pay pretty well to have somebody that's professional and thoughtful and wants to solve their problems. So I charge $100 an hour um, okay. and sometimes they make $100 an hour for, for building IKEA furniture. Sometimes I wow. make $100 an hour mm -hmm. for doing plumbing, but sometimes I make $100 an hour for installing light bulbs. You know, like, it, it just depends. So, like, I think it's a great time. And the own, the hardest part, in my opinion, is figuring out the business side okay. of handyman businesses because anybody that wants to start a handyman business already knows how to do the skills, probably. What they need to do is figure out how to run the business. What resources helped you in the first two years of your business and where small business owners watching this can go to to find help and, and do a better job in operating and running their business? Uh, sure, um, online tutorials are great, but I found having a business coach was really helpful. You do have to spend some money on them, but they'll help you make 
the decisions that you're going to avoid making. You know, there's a lot of things where you're just going to want to hesitate on, and mm -hmm. a business coach will help you to be a little bit more aggressive. The coach I used was Rebecca Ellison. Um, she was terrific. Uh, she helped me systemize all my systems. She helped me figure out how to build a website. Um, she helped me in all sorts of things. Give us an example of how exactly your coach helped you make the right decisions. Sure, so the, the very first part was when I was trying to figure out how to choose a name for my company. Okay. I was gonna do something like Caleb Ingram <laughs> Handyman Services or something Cheesy. like that. And <laughs> she coached me into saying, no, you want to um, target your area. So part of the reason my name is North Seattle Handyman is because A, I want to do work in North Seattle. And B, if someone is looking for an, a handyman in the North Seattle area, they're going to type in North Seattle Handyman into Google. And that actually helped me become the number one handyman on Google. And then the other thing that uh, she helped me out quite a bit with was 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 finding my, tar my target market. Okay. So in order to do that, um, we tailored my website to speak to those people. We're speaking to people that have a lot of money but don't own a screwdriver, mm -hmm. right? So she helped me tailor my, my, my website to um, attract those people. Very well, so business consultants, coaches are worth every penny, the right one. I believe so, yeah. Let's talk about your website. Sure. Is it important to have a website for a handyman and you know, I would good. say it's what has made the difference in my business wow, is okay. having some place where people can go and see me virtually increases my customer base about a thousand fold. Because wow. if I'm just working off of word of mouth, then I haven't even put a drop in the bucket of the people who can see me. So some of the things that we use are our branding right inside of the van. Well done. We use our website. And then the final part is just trying to do a good job for your customers. If you can't do that, if you can't do a good job for your customers and, and communicate with them, then they're not gonna come back. In general, what's your recommendation to other handymen watching you right now in terms of websites? Uh, I would say a square, Squarespace website has been one of the best parts of my business. We focused really hard on it, and right now I come up first when you go handyman Google. Wow. And that has driven a lot of people our way. With a website, if you get a marketing funnel in there, then you will have your pick of the litter, and you will be able to say no to jobs that don't make any money. If you're just doing word of mouth, then you're going to constantly feel like you're up against a, a monetary wall, mm -hmm. you know, okay. and, and having a website really helps alleviate that pressure. How much money are you spending on an average month for marketing? And let's talk specifically, yeah. like what are you doing? Absolutely. Keywords. So we, we, we do a lot of things where we try to stay relevant on Google. Okay. And then I think Yelp is a great website for handyman services in particular. We, we hear that a lot. Um, I have a relationship with Yelp. And then I can kind of turn on my marketing as it comes. So if I'm three months out and I don't want to be, you know, like if I'm a handyman, I don't want to be six months out. No one's going to hire me for six months from now. Um, so I can kind of turn that on and off. In general, if I want to turn it on, it's about $600 a month but I will get about five times what I get right now. And right now I get about five inquiries a day. Any tips and tricks when it comes to Yelp and Google to get the best ROI? Yeah, so one of the things that we do is we ask our customers to put the word North Seattle and Handyman in their review, and that helps with the Google algorithms. Interesting, okay, how yeah. did you, is that again from your coach, or how did that? A lot of that comes, so I've also hired um, a marketing director, um, uh, part-time right now, but hopefully full-time in the next six months, um, and that's a strategy we came up with. How do you set up an effective marketing funnel for a new handyman business? First one would be name. I, my name is North Seattle Handyman because I work in the North Seattle area. Um, next one would be target market. So I want to target the people that I want to do work for. The next one will be having a good professional website. We use Squarespace. It has been awesome. And then the last one is having a customer management system, and that has helped us incredibly. Awesome. Tell us about how many customers on, on an average week you service, and what's the average invoice? Yeah, absolutely. So 
I service between three and five customers, and on some weeks, I'll, it'll be between five and seven. My average uh, invoice is anywhere between $500 and $1,500. Wow. Um, so I make about $800 a day by myself, and then as I include other people, I can make, you know, I think the best day I've had was a $3,000 a day or something like that. Wow. Okay, yeah. are you on a per hour basis, or how do you? I offer them both. Um, it kind of depends on what somebody asks, um, but if I'm gonna bid something, I'm, ten, I'm gonna sort of bid on the worst case, because, um, but I try to offer, I try to be flexible enough or if I, and I try to explain that to a customer. I say, I'm happy to give you a bid, but if you can trust me and we can do hourly, I think you'll probably end up paying less. So okay. I try to give them options, but it's up to them, really. That's fair. Tell me more about the build out of this van and the importance of doing it. So when I first bought the van, um, I bought it for about 28 grand, but it was just a Husk. There was right. nothing in it except for obviously the driver's side, all this stuff. Brand new? I bought it with about 35,000 miles on it. Okay. Um, but once I bought that, I had to invest into sh some shelving. And the shelving cost me about $6,000. Whoa, okay. And it was a big ticket item, but it has made my life so much easier. The two things, I'm six foot four, having a, having a van that I can stand in is amazing for me. Um, and then the other thing is being able to be organized in a van like this makes a world of difference. So um, we, I invested in this uh, padded flooring. I invested in all these. Uh, around the front here, I have a bunch of different kits that I can pull out for different jobs. So if I have like a bunch of hollow wall anchors or if I have a bunch of plumbing parts, I can just pull them all out and, and pick through them. I probably use something different in this van every single day. So okay. I have a lot of tools, but I use a lot of tools. Your initial investment, how much was it and how did you allocate the money to get going? Initial investment was $5,000 or so. Um, you know, a lot of that was just in buying a computer and office supplies. Okay. And then um, it was getting a bond and a license. From there, I had a couple of friends who needed some work done. And my sister helped me start a website. And within three weeks, I had people calling me to, to, to do work, so. Nice, okay. Yeah. Caleb, tell us about the equipment that you would expect to use. Do you need anything specialized or can you just do your job with basic stuff from Home Depot? When you first start out, you can absolutely do something with a pickup truck and a set of tools. Okay. Um, as you grow, I, I've always tried to reinvest into my business from the beginning. No matter how much money I made, I try to put more money into the business than I took out. So the biggest piece of equipment I ever bought was my van okay. and that has paid for itself 10 times over. Um, the rest of it are drills and saws and all the stuff that you would, you know, use building stuff. So, okay. and I, most people that are interested in handyman business, I would assume, have some tools. Gotcha. Nothing you know. that's out of this world as far as tools. Absolutely that you gotta order not. Out of some specialized place that'll make you eventually. Job I think it's a great idea to buy a sweet ass van. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's the best tool. Let's talk about and understand what kind of supplies you use as a handyman. Any advice on finding the right suppliers that will give you the best value? What can you say on that? So from a handyman perspective, most of the work that I do, I just go straight from the person's house to a supplier. So I use Home Depot and Lowe's a lot. And then locally, we have a done lumber here. If you have a good lumber yard that, mm -hmm. that has a lot of things, they're invaluable. But the most important thing for me is that they're spread out across the city because I'm spread out across the city. I'm not working a in a little, you know, in a, in a, in a neighborhood, I'm working in a city. So um, if there's a lumber yard, but they only have one location, it makes it a little bit more difficult to have a relationship with them because I might be in South Seattle one day and then I might be in North Seattle the next day. And I don't want to drive an hour and a half to, to go get something. I need something that's, the proximity is key for me. Okay. Talk us through the process of scheduling a new customer and how far in advance are you booking out? So we have an online portal that the custom, our customers put as much information as possible that we ask of them. And we make it required that they put this information in. They give us a bunch of pictures and I get that all in an email format right up front so that I don't have to waste a ton of time 
um, going to, uh, to people's houses. Right. I'm doing a two hour job and it takes me an hour to get there and back to bid a job, then it's a waste of my time. So our, our systems have been very sort of motivated towards um, being able to accurately quote based off of emails wow. and pictures. To answer your other question, we're, we, we tend to be about six weeks out. We have two people right now, um, but I could increase my, my, uh, my marketing revenue a little bit and we would easily be able to um, have enough work for four or five or six people. How many employees do you currently have and what do they, what do, they do? And what's their average pay? What are you paying them? Uh, so for a handyman tech, I pay between 30 and $35 an hour. And okay. then, um, right now I've cycled through them. Uh, hiring um, is pretty competitive in the Seattle area right now. So trying to find the right people, just trying to get them to come to you is, is, is a challenge. Uh, um, and then for uh, like office staff, um, you know, I pay between 20 and $25 an hour um, for um, uh, admin. One of the biggest challenges in scaling is scaling yourself from one to three or four. But once those three or four people are in place, they can be generating revenue while you peel off and try to work on your, um, your, all of your other systems, your hiring systems and all that stuff. And, and we are sort of in the um, middle stages of that right now. We're, we're creating, um, you know, like we're gonna, mark, we're gonna create a market to um, handyman. So we want to figure out how do we sell ourselves to um, our potential employees. Is there certain tools that you use more than others? Can you describe that? Uh, sure. Um, so I typically have bags where I'll keep subsets of tools in. And then I'll always have all of my um, my my battery powder, pa powered tools. Okay. Um, I have probably uh, 13 or 14 different drills and grinders and all that stuff. And then in here, um, I like to keep, uh, this is actually a great tool. It's called an oscillating tool. It's one of the Swiss Army knives of tools. One of your first purchases should be one of these. Okay. Um, outside of that, you always have to have your cordless drills, your tape measures, um, and then your, your flat bars and hammers and all that stuff. You could do a lot with just this bag. Just this bag, okay. Yeah, just this bag, you could install TVs, you could do plumbing work, you could install light fixtures, you could, um, you could do any number of things. Let's talk about your $100 hourly rate, because you mentioned it a few sure. times in the video. How did you come to that? Is that average for handymen in this area and in general? Sure, when I first started, I was gonna charge 60 or $70 an hour, but I had a couple of friends that had done service businesses and they, they told me that I had to charge more and I listened to them. So I started and people just started taking me up on it. I've always tried to offer value for that. So if I get to somebody's house, I'm not on my phone. I'm not doing anything else. I'm serving that customer and I'm working really hard to make sure that I'm using their time well. So to those who are watching now who are charging 50 to 60 bucks, what would you tell them? I mean, it sounds like say, you can charge more, but- you I, I would say that you're, you're, you're always going to be up against a financial wall. Mm -hmm. $100 an hour is perfect for uh, middle to upper middle class. If you charge 40 to $60 an hour, your clientele is actually going to be probably more detail oriented than a hundred dollars an hour person. I see. Right? Like, like they're, they're going to be trying to get more more out of you at forty to sixty than somebody that start, you're charging a hundred dollars an hour. So at least that's what I've found. Okay. What are the pros and cons of running this business out of your home? Have you considered getting a dedicated space somewhere else? We will probably get a dedicated space in. Uh, somewhere between one and three years, depending on our growth. Okay. But right now with one van, I mean, my van is my office pretty much. I, I work out of the van, I have a small office in my house and I can get a 20% tax rate off by That's having true. something in my house. So it doesn't make any sense for me. Like I, d I ran the numbers and it didn't make any sense. So um, I just stay at home until it actually, until it makes like financial sense and you have enough people that it, and enough vans that you have to have to place to park them all, what's the point? 
What about insurance? Do you need any specialized insurances? What happens when you're on the job and you damage something or your employee gets hurt? Yeah. Let's dive deeper into the details of the insurance setup. So in Washington state, you can be licensed as either a handyman or a general contractor. I am licensed as a general contractor. Um, I do have to pay more in insurance for that. Okay. The handyman distinction would be less, but you are allowed to do less things. And that insurance covers, like I said, the damage something. That's right. If you, if you break something, you damage something, you do anything, you have a choice to make. You can either pay it out of pocket or you can involve the insurance companies. Um, I, if I damage something small, I pay it out of pocket. It's the cost okay. of doing business. But if I, if I were to have a large scale problem, then my insurance would pay for it. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge your, your memory here. Do you, do you know what the cost for insurance is? Like the, oh, yeah, sure. The, the so, right? yeah, so my bonds, my, I think I have a bond for $10,000, and I think I pay $200 a year for it. So it's not too bad. And then my, uh, my insurance, um, I think it's around four grand or so Monthly? for the year. Or the year. Okay. Yeah. And what are yeah. the coverages, though? Do, do you it's have for a million dollars. How much? A million dollars. A million bucks. All right, you guys, it's Blitz time with Caleb. Let's dive into it. Let's first, it. first question, what's your favorite business book? Uh, Be Traction by Gina Wickman. Okay. Uh, what's the weirdest thing that you have seen in somebody's house? I've seen a lot of porno mags. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that an that, that answers it. I think it. that answers it. <laughs> okay. What was the final thing that pushed you to start working on this business? Starting my family and needing to support them. What's the biggest misconception people have about your position, your role? My, well, I would say the biggest misconception about handyman in general are that they are is the sort of Craigslist handyman kind of thing. Okay. So, like, you can make handyman be whatever you want it to be. I made it into a professional service, or you could make it into someone that makes 15 bucks an hour. It's up to you. Uh, question from Ahad. Thank you for submitting your question. What are your plans for the next five to ten years? We're going to try to grow the business and scale up. So, our plans are to be at a million dollars within a year and a half. And in 10 years, we want to be a $10 million company. Awesome. This is from Adrian Walker. Uh, best part of being a business owner? Uh, freedom. So you, you do, well, not having a boss. Now, your customers are your boss to some extent, but, um, but you get to choose them. This is from Aria A. How did the pandemic affect your business? The pandemic grew my business, believe it or not. Um, I have probably grown 15% since the pandemic began. People want to do Not work on their thing. houses. You yeah. know, they have extra money and they want to do it in their house. Awesome. How do you know how long a job will take? Walk us through the process of estimating correctly and not overbooking yourself and, you know, that process. Yeah, so you're gonna, when you first start, you're gonna overbook yourself, <laughs> you know, inevitable. That, inevitable. Okay. And, and so it's about paying attention and, and, and revising. But there are also a lot of great resources out for you. We use HomeWise, HomeWise. and they, um, it's kind of like having a book time for a car. They, they'll tell you what is industry standard in your area. And then you can use that as a benchmark, but then you kind of have to play off of that and say, okay, this is what they say it's going to take. How long is it going to take me? And can I either give a better price to my customer or take a little bit more profit off of it? Okay. Are you taking any different new steps to continue to scale your business? If so, what are those things that you're doing? Absolutely. Because of the success of the website, um, I have pretty much tapped out my ability to make money by myself. So I've okay. started to try to hire. I'm bringing on a business partner and then I've hired a marketing director and we're working on, um, on handyman systems. So we want to offer um, people that are new to handyman businesses and service businesses uh, uh, um, sort of a, an easy way into um, the business side of handyman businesses. How do you plan to do that more specifically? Well, we have a website coming out and um, we will have some online classes. Okay. And tutorials, um, et cetera. Tutorials and all that kind of stuff, yeah. What is demand like for handyman and where would a new handyman look for more connections with customers? 
Um, if you start a handyman business right now, you will immediately get phone calls from uh, real estate people um, and like uh, people who are managing condominiums. Wow, so that, that high. Uh, and that's by just starting a business. They will get your phone number because there's so much demand, at least in our area in Seattle, there's mm -hmm. so much demand that I wouldn't hesitate to guarantee that you will have some work. People will be knocking on your door. You really don't have to do a ton, you know. Now, the whole point of getting good jobs is, is creating that website and doing all that stuff. That's how you get your pick of who you want to work for. I see, okay. So if you just want to work for a contractor, you can make a relationship with a couple of contractors or you can make a relationship with a couple of real estate people. But typically, they're going to charge you know, 30% on top of you. So if you want to go direct to customer, which is what I do, and charge what they charge, that's why I can charge $100 an hour is mm -hmm. because I am not using a third party. I go direct to customer and that makes me more money. Okay. Yeah, as a real estate agent, man, I only have like two people on my contact list. I'm like, where are the handyman? Totally. That actually know what they're doing, they're on time and they're professional like you. So boom, that's right awesome. here. <laughs> Too bad you're not in Bellingham. <laughs> So it's you and another full-time employee. Yep. Curious about your workload. Is it hard to get time off as it's an owner? It's pretty hard to get time off like on a, on a weekly basis because there's a lot going on. But the nice part about owning your own business is if you schedule it, you can take as many vacations as you want. Nice. So I probably work, you know, 50 to 50 hours, uh, 55 hours a week. But, you know, I'll take a week vacation every, you know, three to four months. So nice. it's, there's parts of it that are hard, but by the end of it, like if you're, if you're running a business well, I think that what you're doing for fun is running your business. Like I, that's kind of what I do for fun nowadays is try to grow and figure out how to run my business. That's awesome. You know, I have other hobbies too, but that's the, that's the major one right now. What's your favorite hobby? My favorite hobby is Scrabble. I love playing Scrabble, <laughs> okay. uh, a little chess every once in a while. Nice. And then uh, I love watching the Seahawks too. So. Awesome, we yeah. love the Go Seahawks. Hawks. Go Hawks. <laughs> and you guys, if you're enjoying this video, please take a second, subscribe, like this video, and you will support Caleb as well by doing that. What else can you share with us in terms of hiring employees, finding the best talent? What do you look for sure. to find the right team? Um, so we try to focus on our core values. And rather than trying to hire somebody with the right skill set that has different values than us, we're, we're gonna look for people that have the same values as us and then train them up on the skills. Can you share with us what are your core values? Yeah, core values are trust first, um, value your customer's time and what's the last one? It's, uh, it's, it's work for your customers. And you look for that in everybody you interview. Absolutely. So like rather than having somebody that has different values, then we want to bring them in and try to train them up. What's the most challenging thing for you as a handyman and what's the most rewarding thing? Most challenging is definitely scheduling. Mm -hmm. um, if you're gonna service five customers a week um, and something runs long, you might, and, and you're booked out six weeks, then you might have to reschedule 25 people. Wow. So that can be really challenging. And that's where having a great system comes in handy. Okay. If you're just trying to do that off the top of your head, you're gonna miss a lot of things. But if you have everything in one place, if you have a piece of software that can inform everybody, it makes it make something that's ch like that's hard into something that's doable. If I didn't have that, I think I don't know that I would have ever stuck with this because you do have cost, you have time overruns, mm -hmm. and if you can't effectively reschedule people, then you're going to hate your life. Scheduling, okay. What about yeah. rewarding? What what are the rewards of this business for you personally? Yeah, I for me, it's it's. It might sound corny, but it's just being of service to people. I take pride in the fact that there are some people out there, if their toilet stops running and they need somebody to call, they call me and I can help them. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy making money from that, but you know, it's not all about the money. It's part of it is, is helping my neighbors and countrymen. What type of jobs does a handyman do? Are there jobs that you absolutely won't take from a financial standpoint and things like that? When I first started out, I did a lot bigger jobs. I would get into the medium-sized remodels, um, and I found that 
um, I made more money doing the small work than I did. Interesting. One of the other things we have done recently is uh, in the first couple of years, I was doing a lot of exterior work and we're in the Pacific Northwest and it rains a lot. So we targeted our marketing to try to advertise to more interior work. And that's nice because it just keeps me out of the rain a little bit. You wanted to get out from the rain. <laughs> a little bit. You know, I, I don't mean, mind a little bit. I'll do it. But, uh, you know, if given the choice, I'll, Seattle, I'll be inside. Yeah. yeah, Seattle is rainy. So <laughs> so it's, it's, it's something that you can easily do, right, in terms of shifting who you want to target. Absolutely. Pretty much like a yeah, it's, um, it's, 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 and it's even easier if you have a website mm -hmm. and you can target market. And that comes from the combination of having um, a business coach, having a website, and having uh, target, target marketing. Earlier in the video, we told you that Caleb's gonna share an incredible tip to the success of his business when it comes to systems. So Caleb, why don't you specifically share what those things are and what turned your business around? Sure, so when a client is looking for North Seattle Handyman, they get routed to my website, they input all their information in, and that goes to a Google form. Okay. Once that Google form goes to that, we have a third party software called Zapier, which connects other parts of the business. They send that to an email for me that gives me all that for information up front so I can see it all in one email thread. It also sends it to my customer management system. And in that customer management system, what that does is it keeps everything in one place. So I can invoice, I can talk to the other customers through that system, I can schedule through that system, I can do everything in one spot, which makes it so that if I have to change things, I can do it easily and efficiently. Okay, and what did that do to your business, ultimately? Yeah. I mean, it's made it so that I can't, I've hit my ceiling. The only way for me to make more money at this point is to hire people. And that, that uh, customer platform is called Field Pulse. And I've, I, Field, Field Pulse, yeah. Field Pulse, yeah, okay. they've, they've been great. Yeah. What are you spending monthly on the subscri subscriptions for these three, four platforms? Um, maybe a hundred bucks. That's it? Yeah. Wow. It's not much. So for those not using it, they're really missing I out I would say on... so, yeah. In conclusion, any just general advice to young entrepreneurs, people currently in this industry looking at this video, what would you tell them? Just three pieces of advice. Three pieces of advice. One is get started. Um, go to your friends, go to those people, but start a website. Two is treat your customers like people and they'll treat like you like a person. Um, third piece of advice is systemize, systemize, systemize. Incredible. The more you systemize, the easier your life becomes. Awesome. Caleb, this has been wonderful. We learned a lot. We've learned a lot, so thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming out. I trust you guys enjoyed this really fun episode with North Seattle Handyman. Took away advice that you will implement and execute a new business starting right now. Take a second, like this video, subscribe to our channel. We appreciate your support, you guys. We do this for you, and thank you for watching.